clearly one of the most prominent and credible faces of India Inc. It's such a pleasure to have with us Naina Lal Kidwai coming to us from the NDTV studio at the Congress Center in Davos. Thanks so much for talking to us. Well, I should congratulate you for the NDTV uh, studio at Davos. It's, <laughs> it's easily one of the best there is. Thank you so much. It's a lovely spot yeah. we've got here, clearly. But the mood in Davos, the India mood in Davos, do you think some sort of optimism about India is slowly returning? Well, it's still early into the Davos schedule as the main schedules really only started today. A lot of questions in my one-on-one -on -one meetings around the politics of India because right. clearly there's been uh, a fair amount of showcasing of some of the events over the last uh, week or so. Uh, so people trying to just make up their minds on that. And uh, I think these sort of uh, issues and uh, concerns are going to remain till the election happens. Uh, for those that are players in India, and I've met a bunch of CEOs who have big investments in India, uh, India remains an attractive market. Right. Uh, some of them have put a lot of money into India. We've seen Unilever, as you know, bring in three and a sure. half billion uh, uh, less than a year ago. And GSK has now committed to $2 billion. They brought in one uh, just a little while ago and another one billion to come now. So we are seeing that interest. And there's no denying the attractiveness of the Indian market. But unfortunately, we are also seen, as we well know, a very difficult destination to do business. And right. it's really up to us now to close this gap between the attractiveness and the difficulty of doing business so that we can actually capitalize on the attractiveness factor. Let me first try to talk to you about the concerns that you're saying many delegates here are expressing with regard to the political situation. And there have been some fast-paced yeah. developments so over the last few weeks. It's more curiosity right now, wanting what's, to understand. And, and there's uncertainty because yeah, the till the time there's uncertainty, money doesn't flow in. Yeah. Is that the sense you're getting that till elections, we're not going to expect very much in yeah. terms of hardcore investments? People are waiting on the sidelines to see what really happens. I think it's inevitable. That right. People will uh, wait, but it's not like every company is waiting to put money in right now. Either exactly. Many are waiting to use the capacity they put in, which is still not uh, there in terms of full utilization. So for that, we need to have much more consumption happening so that capacities can be filled so that the next cycle of investment can happen. So I think we have to work now as a country towards making sure that uh, we can enable that investment which should happen to happen because without investment-led growth, growth is going to taper. And uh, there are lots of questions around GDP growth, right. uh, as in people accept, okay, so you're at five now. And I always mention that, well, there's the street view and government's view is that we will be six next year. And there. No, but in fact, today, the finance minister in a session said that we will only grow at 5% this year. So As this, this, the, no, this for the fiscal year 2014. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's he's expected. very clear that it's not going to be above five yeah, percent this so, fiscal. So, but the next year, as in 2014, is what he's saying is six percent. Yeah. yeah, is six. Yeah, and yeah. that six is uh, being uh, greeted with sort of arched eyebrows for, by people who I mention it to, uh, because there are disbelievers, and that's a shame. Uh, so I so you're we, saying that people don't think India can even clock 6% next are, they, year? They, 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 they are asking how and why, what are the underlying assumptions for 6. So okay. we have to defend that 6 in people's minds. And the fact is we, there is stuff we need to do. So the fundamentals are strong. Right. We've had a good agricultural uh, year and that buoys up some of both the spending and of course growth. What uh, clearly remains a laggard is manufacturing, which sure. needs support. The service sector is doing okay. And I think that's another big plus because we're seeing that performance come through, particularly for the IT companies. So it's still needing a bit of explaining. And uh, we, I hope, are not going to end up losing a little bit of time now because of the elections. And I do think that if we can look at the states that are delivering well on industry and industrial growth, and we have a number that yeah. are doing quite well. Which are the ones, according to you, that top the list then? Well, I mean, the obvious ones are Gujarat, Good. Maharashtra. Right. I think the performance we're seeing in terms of growth of Madhya Pradesh is quite uh, amazing. Uh, I've actually just come through a trip, which was largely Gujarat and Rajasthan, on a sort of 10-day holiday, driving holiday, which was quite revealing in terms of the quality of roads, rural roads, electricity down to village level. So and infrastructure so issues being, yeah, yeah, yeah attacked. Right. And uh, it's happening in small towns. Uh, and roads, frankly, which are better sometimes than you have in Delhi. So right. it tells me that we are getting some stuff right at the state level. And hence, it is translating to the states like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, 
uh, which have progressed very well in terms of uh, the way they are delivering, albeit of lower bases. And I think this is the story we need, this, the story of India at the state level, because finally, actually, that is where industry really has its focus. But do you, th do you think we can sell that story? We can sell the story of a Gujarat and a Maharashtra or a Delhi for that yeah. matter instead of that India story. Yeah. Do you think that's something global investors are buying? For instance, I now Delhi reversing the specific permissions or approvals or anything at all on that front and I think we, we don't somehow managed to make that differentiation except to those who are already in the country right. who know the real story. story and I think that right. is why we are seeing the Unilevers and GSKs of the world put money in because they right. know the reality on the ground. So it's, it's the a story that aren't there. They, they still don't understand yeah. the dynamics and they how understand it's really a very high. They only just see a very high decibel sort of central uh, policy and policy uh, inconsistency. And which scares everyone. Uh, tax is clearly a big issue. Uh, right. That is something which impacts everybody. Right. And, and, and the and policy instability there, there is something is, that we haven't been, been able to resolve. Horrendous. And that has really been a serious dampener. So that is something that clearly, you know, the center has to address. So you're saying if we were to look at some of the, the major issues that led India to slow down, the reasons why the India image as an investment destination yeah. took, a, took a clear beating, you would call policy instability on taxation matters as, some, as, 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 as perhaps being the number one? Absolutely. And, and, uh, and it continues. So, and it's not just for foreign business. Indian business okay. faces it too. Okay. Uh, I mean, that had resonance with pretty much in all the meetings I've had today, including some pretty horrible tales from Indian companies as well. Really? Because people want clarific clarification at times. Ad advanced rulings are today available only to non-residents. Right. It's not available to Indian companies. I want to pay my taxes. I want to be sure that my interpretation is the way the government's going to interpret it. So this, uh, if there's such inconsistency in tax ruling, then let's have a process which allows for clarity right. so that those that want to live within the law get it right because clearly the way we're drafting the rules are leaving too much to interpretation. And uh, the whole process of tax legislation, there's much too much in the courts on tax legislation because everything gets thrown up into the courts. So at one end, you could argue Indian companies are always litigating, but then on the other side, government's always litigating. litigating so, right. so we need to get that litigation out of the courts so that the common man who needs to litigate on real issues can get his litigation processed uh, actively and properly. And you're saying till that happens, we're not going to get the investment cycle moving because uh, last two years, the mood of India in clearly was one of extreme pessimism. Yeah. People weren't putting money in. Yeah. There was clearly uncertainty. And while the finance minister seems to be doing a lot of damage control, but uh, uh, has that mood changed significantly or you think yeah. India Inc. is still not quite there? Yeah, India Inc. is not there. 
I think India Inc. even more so than foreign investors uh, is in wait and watch, wait and watch mode on the election. But that's fortunately just around the corner. Right. But is there going to be a flood of investment just after the election? I answer is no. I okay. Think, uh, there's a lot else fundamentally that is going to have to change, including growth. Right. Because unless you have growth, you don't get capacity utilization moving up. And if you don't see capacity utilization moving up, you aren't going to invest in your next level of uh, capacity increase. So uh, we do need that growth. And for that growth, uh, clearly interest rates are high. Uh, so that's a deterrent. Sure. The tax regime, as I just mentioned, is a deterrent. And uh, frankly, in certain sectors like infrastructure, which we badly need, uh, pretty much everything in terms of policy and uh, the way the integration of different ministries and the way they work together uh, is clearly, uh, we've seen, been an issue. So the good news is that with some of the clarifications coming through the CCI, these projects are right. being cleared, if we can keep ramming those projects through and making sure that uh, we can get the power generation up, which has indeed begun to happen. We've seen electricity uh, over the last four or five months seeing a 12 to 15 percent uh, Gro growth, which tells me that those projects are clearing. And uh, God alone knows the multiplier effect of that will be marvelous. Uh, I heard a wonderful statistic the other day, which is just with one well kicking in mm -hmm. uh, because of, uh, I hope, the incentive in terms of gas price right, uh, right. promising going forward for those that are pulling the gas out of the ground. But just the one well kicking in, uh, which has taken uh, up our capacity from 11 and a half to 13. So that's the kind of multiplier effect that it has. One and a half million dollars a day being saved. Okay. And that saving being because of the price of import versus the versus, price in right, which this domestic gas is available. Gases. Yeah. And imagine the benefit of that to us in terms of our current account deficit. So the solutions are also quite wonderful. They are available to us and uh, we can really marshal every bit of our focus on making sure that some of these which benefit the country are uh, actually given high focus. and. Uh, see the light of day. But is there focus right now on economic policy, on getting growth back? Because the sense one is getting at least is that we're seeing a lot of populist announcements. Yeah. So on one hand, you have the, the, you know, the Aam Aadmi Party in Delhi that's, that's, that's formed the government in Delhi going yeah. ahead and talking about power cuts, free water. Uh, you've got uh, you know, the central government increasing the subsidy on LPG. Yeah. So ahead of elections, we're going we, yes. gonna to see many more populist announcements. Do you think yeah. that dampens the spirit further in terms of the fact that right now it's all political and not economic. Well, you know, um, economic thinking and some of the pundits uh, will tell you that subsidies are the poorest form of uh, delivery of uh, product to those that you're trying to get it to. So it is a pity that we're having to resort to subsidies. And don't forget that for every subsidy we bring, whether it's in power or, as you mentioned, LPG cylinders or whatever, it's money that could have been utilized for something, something else. else. So those are the choices we are making. We are making them for the people, saying, OK, we're going to allow you to get free power or lower cost power. But then in doing that, we're not telling you that we're not going to build the next road. But that is indeed what is going to happen, because money is finite. And if you don't have the money, something else that is needed is not going to happen. But subsidies make good politics. They make terrible economics, but it makes good politics. Yes. And what do you do in a situation where people like the sound of yeah. it? You know? And, and the, the shame of it is that it has a boomerang effect. So we've seen other states now. Exactly. Pick Maharashtra. Up on that refrain. And uh, to my mind, it is unhealthy. Because with great difficulty, we saw power tariffs go up. Because we have the sickest state electricity boards of anywhere in the world because there's so much free power or anti and losses. And the fact that the paying people, which were largely corporates or and individuals, were being really asked to pay a price which covered for this inefficiency is a shame. But you can't just drop prices without tackling the inefficiency. Issue, so the right. right thing that has to happen is tackle the inefficiency, the cheating, the lying, and all the T&D losses. And then you can certainly bring power prices down. 
So this is a little bit of putting the cart before the horse. I but it, it is so-called the ARP effect, which is now playing out across the country, because at least in terms of populism that, that is working. Is yeah. that a concern? How, how is the emergence of the Aam Aadmi Party being viewed, for instance, by leaders here in Davos? It is a party that came on the promise of uh, cleaning up politics, yeah. but now we're seeing a lot of economic ramifications. Also, th yeah. the kind of governance we've seen in the last three weeks, it's, it's, it's a lot of confrontation. Many have termed it anarchy. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on, on how it's really playing out at a global well, platform. I think uh, where we saw a big change and which is a very valuable change is the heightened awareness on corruption and to have an election fought on issues of corruption is I think huge. It is clearly something that needed to be addressed and uh, it's been a very high decibel uh, level of awareness and I think uh, a wake-up call for the politics of the country and indeed for corporates that work within this polity, that uh, corruption is something that is clearly at a level where it is not going to be tolerated by the people in the country. So I think the good effect of this hopefully would be a good clean up, clean up. of this mess. So whether this has in fact lost momentum because the focus has shifted to other things right. uh, is what I would worry about because right. it would be a pity if the, a party that was good because it was just nipping away at the heels sure. of those that have been in power for so long sure right. that right. The, uh, the change okay. and the dialogue is actually different uh, was important and I fear that by some of the economic uh, and indeed even foreign policy type of issues that have arisen uh, that the party that was facilitating this process which I think was good for India uh, is in fact going to lose momentum. So the economic policies of the Aam Aadmi Party uh, I am not familiar with. Right. Uh, I only know the couple of steps that have been taken recently. So and I hear that they are putting together something. Which they, we they've, got a, they've got it. They've got it going. You know, it is something that uh, we will all look to uh, with uh, in, indeed anticipate and hope that it is not we left of center which is the, the which fear. is the worry which the is the real fear is yeah. that it is and i don't know enough about the party i haven't engaged with it to know. right uh, but that that comfort, would be very very that, that would be a shame sh because the comfort one draws from at least the bjp and the congress they're shades of gray yes but both tend to certainly acknowledge that growth is important for india right that we need industrial and manufacturing and service sector growth in order to provide that growth and that without growth, we won't get development. Mr. Right. Mr. Right. Chitambaram said it in his budget speech last March. And indeed, we know that uh, Mr. Modi certainly embraces this as well. So that was the comfort. So you're had. saying that whichever party comes to power, whether it's the Congress or the yeah. BJP, the underlying assumption is that it, w it is a party that would like to give growth a chance. Correct. And there may be you know, differences in the way it's executed or the ability to execute. And I think a lot of the frustration of uh, India Inc. has been more around execution of policy rather than policy itself. Um, right. And where it is policy itself, then clearly there is uh, an attempt now to correct that, which is good. Right. But the Aam Aadmi Party, the concerns remain if that it, it's yeah, too, so too left to center. And yeah, we don't know. So let's hear. What and and that's, what, that's what many believe, that the sheen is already wearing off and, and yeah. a party that came on a very good promise is already yeah. sort of unraveling, as the finance minister says today. Yeah, well, it's uh, you know, hard to say that uh, that's the point at which this party is very young. Right. And it obviously needs to grow up. Uh, we want to give it a chance. And uh, hopefully they won't have too many missteps along the way. <laughs> All right.